gentleman from Florida, Mr. Posey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I guess you have read uh, Mr. Devine's statement. Is it Devine? Devine? Have you all read that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we have. Um, I was struck somewhat by the fact that 13 lawyers appeared at the April 2010 hearing, the deposition, uh, to represent uh, the accused, so to speak, here. And I was wondering, what if they'd have brought 50? Would that be okay? I mean, they brought 13 for five defendants. What if they'd have brought 50? Would that have been okay? Congressman, no. perhaps I could address this issue because I think there's um, the, the statement in Mr. DeWine's or Attorney General DeWine's uh, statement that uh, there were 13 attorneys present for the defendants at Mr. Raines' deposition is, is not entirely accurate. Um, as you know, uh, Mr. Raines and Mr. Howard and Ms. Spencer are all defending lawsuits alleging significant liability, and they are all entitled to have their own separate representation. But at, at most depositions, one attorney for each defendant uh, appears. For particularly important depositions, such as the deposition of Mr. Raines, there may be, may be appropriate to have more than one. But um, for this particular deposition, it lasted for two days, Fannie Mae advanced the legal fees for a total of six attorneys, two for Mr. Raines, two for Mr. Howard, and one for Ms. Spencer, and one for Mr. Mudd, who, uh, while not a party directly to this lawsuit, is a party to, an, to other lawsuits that are being, um, discovery is being conducted uh, at the same time. So, uh, and Fannie Mae was itself was represented by two attorneys, one of whom became ill during the first day and was replaced by a different person. In fact, Ms. Spencer sought advancement for two attorneys and we declined that. So the suggestion that we paid for 13 attorneys to attend this deposition is just not accurate. I don't think Attorney General DeWine would know that. He may know how many people actually show up, but he doesn't know how many actually get paid. Uh, and we know how many get paid, and 13 did not get paid. Ha, Mr. Chairman, ha, how many got paid that day? The number that got paid was uh, a total of seven for the individuals, two for Mr. Raines, two for Mr. Howard, one for Ms. Spencer. I'm sorry, that's five. And uh, two for Fannie Mae, uh, one of whom became ill during the course of the deposition. So, in effect, six or seven if you count the one that fell ill. Okay. Um, and we will continue to um, advance pay legal fees until there's some adjudication of their guilt. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and there's no limit on the future. I mean, correct? Uh, all of the parties, I think, are trying to bring this matter to a close. In terms of how long the case is going to last, I will say that there have been over 120 depositions in the case. A hundred of those were noticed by the plaintiffs, not by the defendants, but by the plaintiffs. The plaintiffs took a hundred depositions. So, of course, the defendants must show up to appear at those depositions and to examine those witnesses. So, this case has gone on for six years, but it is the plaintiffs that have alleged 1,500 pages of, of accusations between their complaint, the Paul Weiss report, and the O'Fay report. There are 1,500 pages of allegations. They've done very little to try to winnow the case down. And frankly, the plaintiffs are the parties that added the three defendants we're talking about. The plaintiffs are not going to collect $9 billion from Mr. Raines, Mr. Howard, and Ms. Spencer. I don't know them, but I doubt that they have $9 billion. It's unclear to me why the Attorney General of Ohio has even named those parties as defendants since the only entity that could actually pay the $9 billion that the Attorney General says he's seeking would be Fannie Mae, and in effect, not even Fannie Mae, but the U.S. Treasury. Well, <clears throat> just, just a quick response. I, I would probably fault the agency more than the plaintiffs if they've got 1,500 pages worth of allegations. I don't think that's the plaintiff's fault. I think uh, in all likelihood there's something that the defendants did wrong uh, that resulted in them coming up with 1,500 pages in accusations. Um, well, if I may, Mr. Posey, I yes. mean, this, is, this matter is in litigation. There is a presiding judge, and whether people were right or wrong is something that will be determined through the judicial process, respecting the rights of all of those involved. These are very difficult matters, and I appreciate the, uh, the concern about the, the legal expenses, but there are various rights here, and I think we are all striving 
to respect them. Well, just what, what, well, we're trying to respect the taxpayers too, obviously. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and that's who gets left out of the equation usually. Uh, what steps are you taking to protect the assets um, of the people who are accused of wrongdoing in the event they're found guilty of wrongdoing? What steps are you taking to get the greatest uh, amount of reimbursement possible? Uh, we have no authority to freeze any of their assets or to limit that. Uh, what I would say is in the indemnification agreements that they sign, they have to agree to restore any funds given to them if an adverse decision is made. That would mean all of their assets are at risk. In terms of controlling or limiting those assets before such a determination, we do not have the authority to do that. But you have a plan you th with the indemnification agreement? You have a if, course of action that you would take? If they sign, in order to be advanced fees, they sign an agreement that if they are found to have violated those fiduciary duties, that they will repay the funds. And okay. the, they can, if they refuse to do that, you can go after them to the maximum of all their assets. Yeah. And, and it would appear probably they don't have the assets to do that. Is that what you're telling me? Did I read that between the lines earlier? I, I personally it's don't know the size of their assets and what right. the final fees would be, um, so I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr.